Justus Nischlag, the hardest name to say in World Triathlon, just so everyone is super clear on how to say it, can you tell us how? Justus Nischlag in German. Yeah, I know it's hard, but uh, Justus Nischlag is also fine. <laughs> you don't mind when people pronounce the J? Uh, no, I don't mind. No, that's, okay. that's fine. But it would never happen in Germany. Like, if you introduced yourself to a German speaker, they would always just naturally say it Justus? I think so, yeah. I think in Germany it's uh, quite usual. Um, so, yeah, for the Germans, it's not that hard. <laughs> so people have no idea who you are, probably, for the large part. Obviously, uh, you've been in triathlon for a while now, but just bounced onto the T100 scene yesterday. You were in that front swim pack, and even I kind of, like, I've been hanging out with you a bit this week, but even I saw you in that front swim pack, and I'm like, God, I just forgot that Eustace was even going to be a factor in this race. And then as the day went on, you were clearly one of the strongest athletes out on course. For you, was it a surprise? I think uh, doing the podium was kind of a surprise for me, but uh, being in front uh, after the swim was not really a surprise. I used to be a strong swimmer and on a normal half distance race, uh, I'm used to get in front uh, in the swim, but here it's such a, such a stacked field, so it's quite uh, nice to get on some pizza and uh, enjoying the swim. So, yeah, it was, was great fun. How was the pace at the start of the bike being set by Martin Van Riel and Alistair Brownlee? Was it tough to hold on or was it pretty manageable? Uh, in the beginning, I'm, I was fine, I felt good. Um, it was a little bit hectic uh, going up that hill and that everyone got sorted and uh, you don't want to, or I don't uh, wanted to get in the drafting zone like uh, keeping the 20 meters but yeah to be honest uh, I think it took like half a lap to get everyone in uh, in a good position and um, yeah maybe I overbiked a little bit in the beginning uh, so I dropped in the end but uh, yeah for the, for, the, for the start it was fine. Talk to me about power. How much power were you holding when you were holding on to Martin Van Riel when he was sort of being pretty aggressive at the start of the ride? In the beginning, I think it was like 340 for me. So You're a pretty light guy too. Yeah. Like, what do you weigh? Uh, 68. Okay, 340 yeah. watts, 68 kilos. That's pretty good numbers, right? Yeah, yeah. I think uphill it was even more, but average uh, for the first lap, around about 340. Um, yeah. Maybe <laughs> that was the reason why I got dropped in the end, but um, yeah, legs were still fine for the run. So after the first lap, they felt uh, quite okay. Uh, was a little bit worried about it. <laughs> so you're a wild card. Have you got any word on whether you're going to be racing the grand final yet? Um, I think it's hard because uh, I got an email last week or two weeks ago and it says you, you need to race uh, the T100 twice uh, to be allowed uh, to race in the final. And I think there are no really slots for white cards because uh, everyone is going to race the, the final of the contract athlete. Um, so, yeah, I'm on the waiting list. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, I would love to race there, but uh, I think it's hard or it's kind of impossible. Yeah, let's see. Well, I mean, they run the race. If they want to have 28 people there or 24 people or 20 or 32, they can just do it. Yeah. Like there's not, it's not like there's a, you know, limited amount of space. Dubai is a pretty big place. So you just podiumed. You're one of the very few men that's done that. There's going to be plenty of men at the grand final who haven't podiumed a race. Why couldn't you just be put on the start list? Yeah, let's, uh, fingers crossed. I, I would love to come there and uh, race. So... Yeah, let's see what they are doing. <laughs> and if you don't race the grand final, what's the rest of the season look like for you? Um, so I'm going to do Challenge Barcelona in two weeks' time. It's um, it's format like the, the T100. It's a race, something between middle distance and uh, Olympic distance. I think it's like 60k on the bike and 15, 14k on the run. Not, not 100% sure. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to prepare for the 70.3 Worlds in Taupo. It's in December, and so quite a long season for me. If you did the grand final, and let's say you top five at the grand final, or even top ten, how would your season uh, program change for the rest of the year? Uh, 
Yeah, I, I think it depends on the on the timing. Uh, when when I get the information if it's possible to race or not, but uh, I will do the the worlds for sure in December. So yeah, maybe not not uh, not racing um, Challenge Barcelona, but uh, yeah, I think we have to wait. <laughs> okay, wait and see. Um, when it comes to your triathlon, talk to me. How many years have you been in the sport? Tell me a little bit about the racing that you've done in the past. What do you see as your best result before this? Oh, that's hard. I think I started doing triathlon uh, with the age of 10 years. Um, before, and you're how old now? I'm 32, <laughs> so quite a long, long time. And before I did gymnastics and swimming, athletics. Um, yeah, I think that was the, the very beginning. And um, my best results so far yeah, on the, on the short course was uh, probably Stockholm, was the WTS race and uh, yeah, I got fifth in the end on the Olympic distance. So that was my best performance on the Olympic distance and then I won some World Cups over the sprint distance and yeah, I've been to the Olympics 2021 in Tokyo, uh, which was kind of, <laughs> kind of a disaster for me because I was injured uh, the last years and was struggling with uh, Achilles pain and rupturing things on, on the Achilles. But uh, yeah, we finished six with a team relay. That was pretty nice. But yeah, my individual race was, was not that good. Who coaches you? Uh, Dan Laurent. Yeah, I think, uh, decent coach I've heard. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> How did that relationship start? Uh, he was a national coach in Germany. Uh, until 2016, I guess, after the Olympics in Rio. Um, and I started working with him, I think, one year before. And yeah, we kept going. And uh, so, yeah, I'm quite honored to be an athlete coached by Dan Lorang. <laughs> Do you think that in the hierarchy of Dan Lorang's favorite athletes, like we know he coaches some big names, Taylor Nib, Lucy Charles Barclay, Anne Haug, Fred Funk. Where do you think you are? you think you're maybe higher or lower than Fred in the hierarchy, for example? Oh, I think that's, that's hard to say. Um, I think everyone is just uh, doing their best. So, um, you're supposed to just say you're higher than Fred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're, we're friends and uh, we trained together in a training camp in Sierra Nevada um, a few years ago and I think it would be nice if we can do like a uh, Dan Lorang training camp. How good would that be? With uh, Taylor, Annie, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle. Yeah. you, Fred. That would be great fun, yeah. It is a ridiculously strong group of athletes he has, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> so, what makes Dan Larang the coach that he is? That's hard to say. I think there are many factors. Uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's in his job for several years and, um, uh, yeah, I think he's just... Uh, very scientific guy and um, he, I think the, the main factor because he's not there in Saarbrücken where I live, it's in Germany, uh, so everything goes on telephone and uh, training peaks and uh, you have to be good in uh, doing conversations and uh, getting all the, the key facts for training and yeah that's also a big part of the athletes he's working with. Uh, that's kind of your part to give him the things and uh, the advices he, know, uh, he needs to know uh, to adapt the training. And I think this is uh, yeah, the main factor and that's uh, his strength. Okay, so some non-triathlon questions, if you'll indulge me. What's your favorite food? My favorite food? Um, yeah, it's not not that easy, but uh, I think for main dishes uh, it's like just pasta. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it simple. Um, yeah, and uh, we have in Germany we have uh, because in in uh, Saarbrücken it's next to the French border, uh, so we have a crab 
uh, creperie. Yep. I don't know if you know yep. what it is, but... Uh, like really thin typical, pancakes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. a typical French thing. And uh, yeah, I think this is my favorite for, for dessert. Okay. And we were talking something that I've learned about you. You don't really listen to music and you don't have a Spotify account. <laughs> Do you have a Netflix account? Like, are you just someone? Because I talked to Annie Haug after Ibiza, and she has nothing. Like, she goes home after training. She does watch the 6.30 news, but then she just cooks and goes to bed. Is that sort of the same for you? I know, not really. I, I have a Netflix, <laughs> and uh, sometimes I'm using the Spotify of my girlfriend. So. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. You just don't like paying for it. It's not that you don't want one. Uh, no, no, I think it's fine. We can share. Uh, I just need it for like indoor sessions. Uh, I like to watch some Netflix series, uh, but always in combination with with music. I think just three hours indoor, it's boring just to watch movies, or it's also boring just to listen to music. So it's kind of a good mix. How long have you been with your girlfriend for? Uh, six and a half years. Four. Wow, long time. Not engaged though. No. <laughs> you plan to pop the question? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty unfair, just putting you on the spot like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> How did you meet? Uh, she's also triathlete and uh, living and training in Zawurken. So, yeah, that was the contact point. <laughs> yep. Okay, cool. And then family, you got brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have a brother. Uh, he's two years older and a younger sister. And... Uh, they used to do triathlon as well, yeah. but um, yeah, my brother went more for uh, cycling races like mountain biking and uh, yeah, going on the track. Yeah, my sister still does uh, triathlon yep. in the Bundesliga, German German Bundesliga. Yeah. Outside of triathlon, what's your favorite sport? Out of triathlon, I um, think it's winter sport because it's yeah. quite big in Germany. And uh, I really love to watch them on TV because it's a great mix. And uh, yeah, when you're coming home from a big training day or in between sessions, uh, yeah, I think it's cool to just lay on the on the couch and watching winter sport. <laughs> Yesterday after the race, we saw that you're in a bit of a bad way. Like had a bit of trouble with the podium. Yeah. Um, <coughs> what happened, and and how are you now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine now. Uh, I think I just gave 120%. <laughs> so I was done after, after the finish and uh, my body was shaking and I was freezing cold. And yeah, so I, I don't have control of my body, <laughs> but I uh, really like to go on the podium. So I think it was a good decision. But afterwards I went to the medical and uh, they tried to warm me up and uh, yeah. They did a great, a great job. <laughs> Justus, it's great to meet you this week. Uh, well done on your performance. I don't think anyone picked you for their podium, but clearly you're a name that everyone sort of has to start thinking about in these big races, whether it be in Dubai for the grand final or 70.3 World Champs in December or even just on the 2025 T100 World Tour. So thank you for coming out to Lake Las Vegas and yeah, it was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thank you.